but we're, we're good now. So, hello everyone, this is Vermillion. Today we'll be running a Metal Gear Solid 1 on the PS1. And first of all, I'm playing this game on a PlayStation TV, which is basically a console version of a PS Vita. The reason for that is because it's the fastest version of the game, uh, besides the PSP, but no one cares about the PSP, let's be honest here. Um, so yeah, we'll be playing easy, all bosses. And when I say the difference is between all bosses and any percent is that all bosses, you have to fight all the bosses. It's in the name. So on the on go, we're going to start it. So three, two, one, go. All right. So in this game, we're going to be skipping a lot of codex, a lot, a lot of codex. So you can hear me meshing X a lot because on the console version of the game, you cannot skip the codex with just a simple button. So yeah, that's going to be a lot of the game. There's a lot of story in this game. So we have to skip all that. So this is the docs right here. It's basically an auto scroller, but at the same time, what we have to do is we need to get five or more alerts in the docs here. And the reason for that is basically later on in the game, there's gonna be a part where we wanna avoid this major RNG. And in order to do that, we need 10 alerts by the end of the game. Um, before that part. So we so the only reason this is a good part is because there's nothing else to do. Might as well just get five alerts. So we want to make sure this guard keeps seeing us, not seeing us. That's good. We want to keep doing this for as long as possible. You don't want to, you want to make sure the alert's actually cleared before you can uh, get another one. So we're going to do this for about, about two and a half minutes, somewhere around that area. And that's because the elevator is coming down and we cannot do anything else. That is it, basically it. So yeah, we want to make sure that he sees us over and over again. Oops, I got hit there. It's fine, though. We can flip him. He's going to be knocked out. No, wait for him to get up. So we should get one more alert here, and we should be fine. Alright. I'm going to go for one more, just for fun. Because, uh, you know, why not? We, have, we still have plenty of time. And that's it. All right, that's good. So now we have enough alerts for the end of the game to avoid this RNG. So basically, what happens in end the game is that Snake gets a um, he gets a um, a card shot out of his hand, and basically, um, if you don't have ten alerts or more, then the card gets eaten by a rat, and the rat is like really random and really really hard. But if you have one ten alerts, then uh, the, the the card spawns in like one of seven areas, so it's easier just to control. That's why we do that. All right, so there's gonna be a part here where we just want to skip all these codecs. There's a lot of codecs coming up and load screens because this game uh, is very story based and it's a good story, but we don't want to see that right now. We're speedrunning and more codecs. They're all Codex. And this okay, this so this room right here is the heliport. It's kind of weird. Um, you have to make sure you don't get hit too many times on here. The guards are kind of aggressive, and you have to make sure you take a specific line. And it's kind of it's kind of tricky at first, but we will get through it. And you see me equipping the chaff grenades because in this game, if you have a weapon equipped, you run faster, actually. You run about 10% faster. And clean heliport. That room is kind of tricky. You don't want to get take too many hits there. Because those guards will actually destroy you. Alright, so now we're just crawling through the vent to the next area. And yeah, there's not much to really talk about here. It's just we're just making sure that we um, get into the hangar nice and nice and clean. Is there a reason why you chose Metal Gear Solid out of all of them? Um, just a game I really loved when I was young. Um, and it just looked like a really cool run. I saw it one time um, when I was looking speed runs for fun, and I saw it and I was like, you know what? I could do this. It's really fun, and uh, just got really into it. It's really fun. And uh, yeah, just really, really fun game to run. Really cool. 
I like fighting bosses, so this category is like the one that like I really wanted to do. So right into yeah, here, I... sorry, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. So right here, we're gonna throw a chaff grenade uh, at this box. We have to make sure we throw it at this box. It's a bit of timing. Get into the elevator because we want to distract this guard to make sure he doesn't see us, and we're good. All right, talk now, Flo. Sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> I saw that you were doing. Was it a boss rush competition before? Uh, a boss rush? What do you mean? Or you did? I think I, I saw that you were doing some sort of challenge with others. Oh. Uh, in the future. Uh, it, it's like a tournament for this uh, for PC. It's like a you're fighting all the bosses, and it's like it's the same it's the same thing, but it's on PC and PC MGS one and console MGS one is completely different. So it was, it's like a tournament. It's still happening right now, actually. It's pretty cool. But yeah, we're coming up to our first major like point in the game, which is the guard encounter. And the guard encounter is. <laughs> like, like the name says, a guard encounter. You're gonna, you have to kill about, I think, 12 guards. And we're going to make sure we uh, shoot the guards in a specific area so that we can kill them as fast as possible so, the, so they load uh, they load in faster so we can end the sequence. Because you have to kill all these guards. I'm going to grab this ration because you have to. I mean, you don't have to, but just nothing else to do here. So we're waiting for Meryl to free us from the cell. I'm gonna cut my card right now because we need this card for later. All right, so this is the garden counter. It's coming up. We're so calm. All right, so we got the guards there. It's not that bad. What are you waiting for? Shoot! Don't talk to me like a rookie. I'm telling you, shoot! Alright, so now we're gonna basically go next to the door and wait and just like shoot them. Unload. Alright. Oh, we have Mail helping us too, so it's not that big of a deal if I miss a guard. Alright, Meryl's being cooperative. Sometimes she doesn't like to shoot at all. Sometimes she likes to shoot a lot. So thankfully she helped us out. We want to save, save as many bullets as possible for the upcoming uh, fight. And yeah, that's the garden counter. Okay, now we're going to skip this next codec and we're going to head down to the armory to fight Ocelot, which is the first, like, first real boss of the fight of the game. And he'd be fought in two different ways. You can either shoot him, which is like the safe way, but like slower, or you can be crazy and throw grenades at him. And throwing grenades is kind of scary because if you mess up one small like movement with grenades, then you will blow up the room. And because there's wires, and if, if any of the wires get hit by an explosion, then the room is the room's done. You have to restart. So I'm gonna grab the grenades right now. I'm not gonna do a grenade onslaught because it's kind of insane. And only for like PB attempts. I'm gonna quickly see for here and I'm gonna blow myself up into the wall because it's faster. Alright, so we need to see fours to make sure that we uh, get into the room. I'm gonna use both C fours here just to remove them from my menu because we don't need them anymore. And here's a fight. Shoot him here, wait for a shot here. Shoot him again. Oh, I messed up a little bit. So we want to shoot him. We want to make sure we loop him like this. All right, we got the loop on. All right, should be one more shot. Let's fight. So that fight can be a little tricky. Um, the flick shot on the on the top left can be a little, a little weird, but you don't really lose so much that much time. You keep him in a loop and you get to uh, just kill him. That's first boss. And, uh, yeah. That's, uh... can be a little tricky fight at first. The little movement is kind of weird. You have to make sure you do, like, a semicircle. And now we are going over to, uh, our first and only really major glitch of the game, which is the vent glitch. And you'll see the vent glitch coming to, uh... 
coming up. We just need to get past his armory, though. So this guard right here, you gotta flip him. There we go. Head over to the elevator. And the elevators in this game are completely random. Like, sometimes they come immediately. Sometimes they take uh, two presses to come down. So this is the vent glitch. So the vent glitch is basically, I'm gonna go halfway through this vent and I'm gonna stand up inside the vent. So, and we're gonna go out of bounds. It's coming up right here. Look up, stand up, and now we're out of bounds. That's the vent glitch. Um, basically, we just <laughs> insert ourselves into the wall. And now we're, we don't, we don't have to do this part where there's lasers and stuff like that. All we do is go down and we're now in the snow field. And we're about to fight our second boss of the game, which is the tank, which is a pretty tricky fight at first. Uh, things can go wrong, but as long as I don't mess it up, we should be fine. Walk over here, walk up. All right, we got it. And we do have to equip our grenades, so we, just, we, need to, we need to kill him. Toss the grenade inside. And we stand over here and we toss a grenade, the moment the cutscene happens and ends, we just smash square and yeah, like And that's the fight. That's the second final boss of the game. Two grenades. That's it. <clears throat> so yeah, that fight, it can be a little tricky at first because if you mess up, then the, the tank just like come, keeps like uh, going around and stuff like that. It's not a good time. It's quite annoying, actually. But if, as long as you stick like that, then you are good. Oh, and I sip a little bit here. All right, and here's the nuke building. So the nuke building is a kind of a scary place because if you mess up this area at all, then the whole room floods with poison gas and you like can't do anything. You also can't use weapons at all in this area because there's nukes in here and they don't want you to uh, stuff the nukes. So we're gonna flip this guard here and go into the elevator. So that, that's the scary room out of the way. That room is pretty terrifying, not gonna lie. It's actually, I've seen so many people lose run to that room. And the worst part is we're gonna keep seeing that room like at least three more times. It's not the first, that's not the, not the only time we'll see that room. If make one small mistake, then it can be a disaster. So we're now we're grabbing the Nikita, the infamous weapon over the over many games and because we have to um, remote control and missile this uh, electric box so we can go over this electric uh, floor to fight our fourth boss i mean the third boss of the game the ninja all right so this, so basically we got a codec it's gonna say that there is um Electric floor, poison gas, we need to use Nikita to get rid of it. Two, three, and then I make sure our movements are fine. Oop, I might be a little too far to the left. No, we're good. Play it safe a little bit. And, yep. So if you if you mess up the Nikita there, there's like turret that can shoot it down. There's also if you you like put into a wall or something like that it explodes if that happens then you lose like a lot of time actually because you have to sit there and do the Nikita again kind of annoying but luckily we did not uh that didn't happen to us all right so next up we have, some, we have a few cutscenes. He's worth because we're five. We're about to fight the ninja. Who's basically he has stealth, he's a sword, and he's busted. So how do you fight someone who has a sword, who's busted, and who's invisible? Metal Gear Logic says you punch them. That's the best way. Our, our guns don't work because he can deflect the bullets, but he can't. You can't deflect punches. Now, make me feel it. Make me feel so this fight is pretty. It's pretty simple. You basically just run up a bunch of them the whole time. Uh, the only tricky part is that his movements can be weird, and you can miss a punch, and you lose time. But it's not a hard boss at all. Oh, 
I'll make sure that we I must punch up. Okay, one more hit to do a dive kick. We're about to do a flip kick here. Yep. One more hit. Just had the second phase, which is hide and seek. So now he's going to go into certain spots. Invisible, we have to find him. We use the audio to make sure that we know we know where he's at. Alright, so he spawned in a pretty good area. Alright, now we're gonna listen to him again. Alright, he spawned in a really bad area, actually. It's fine though, one more spot. This part we want to avoid this punch because this punch he has, I call it the Falcon Punch. It's really strong, and the hitbox is massive. It, it it's a lot bigger than it just looks. It's a lot. It's massive. Like I almost got hit there. You saw yes, you saw how uh, far it was. And that's a really good ninja fight. Really, really, really good. No mistakes. Thank God. Oh, I messed up. Now we gotta still calm him to end the fight. You cannot do anything else. You can grenade. I'm not sure if you can grenade him, but you need to shoot him. That's a ninja. Really good fight. So now we have a the longest load screen in the game. Like for some reason on console, this load screen is like. 50 seconds. So this would be a good time for any donations or anything uh, you guys want to say. Hello? There's just... Yeah. yeah. Uh, hold on real quick. <laughs> uh, no donations yet. Everyone, you can use the exclamation donate to find more information about where to donate. Um, and we're doing a weekend wishes where you have a bunch of different streamers. You're streaming throughout the weekend. Some of us are doing six hour blocks. Some people are doing 24 hour blocks. Uh, you can find more information on the main page of the Tiltify. But thank you everyone for joining us today. All right, nice. Um, so yeah, we just have to skip to these cutscenes. This list, this screen is really, really long. And we're basically backtracking to the B1 to fight our second boss. I mean, our, sorry, my bad. Our fourth boss of the game, my bad. Uh, Psycho Mantis, a really infamous fight. Um, but a really, but a really, really cool fight at the same time. For people who never play Metal Gear, uh, you have to fight him by using the second second controller port. You cannot beat him if you are using one controller. Um, you have to, you have to switch controller ports. Like you have to switch from player one to player two. And um, it's a really cool fight. Can be a little tricky, but he's a really cool boss. Uh, one of the most memorable bosses in gaming, for sure. Cause like, this is like a PS1 game and he's just like, you gotta use a second controller port. You can't beat him with the only one. Because the, the, the reasoning for that is, is he can read your mind, but if you switch controller ports, he can't read your mind. <laughs> Pretty funny. So I'm gonna shoot here to alert Meryl, cause Meryl is basically like, uh, disguised as a guard. We want her to get to the bathroom as fast as possible. I'm gonna equip the stun grenade here. We need we need a sun grenade for later on in the fight. Don't move. Alright. So this is just basically just cutscenes for us to get to Mantis. Okay, let's go. I know this place better than you. I'll be point man. Follow me. Alright, so a little fourth fourth wall break here from Snake. That's strange. There's no guard. What happened to the music? <laughs> that part's funny. I'll keep a lookout. Make sure you're ready. Okay? He's aware of the music that's happening in the game. All right, so now we're heading to the commander room. This is where we're going to fight Psycho Mantis. So here, Meryl's gonna get, gonna get controlled by Psycho Mantis. Come on, Mr. Foxhound. I'm gonna do a new strat where I toss Meryl into the room. It's actually a, compl a completely new strat. 
Yeah, we got it. It, it was found out about a week ago. Um, our theory was that uh, us tossing Meryl into the room is slightly faster, and it, it actually is, than just her walking in. That's so crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> we just found out just last week. <laughs> All right, so now we throw a sun grenade here to stun Meryl as fast as possible. Uh, we equip our SOCOM. Now that's time for Mantis. So the, when the fight starts, I actually have to, um. I actually have to switch back controller port. I cannot beat him on player one. And he always spawns top right here, so we know where he's gonna be in the beginning. But we use our first person to see where he's at the whole time. And audio cues as well. Oh, he, oh no, he switched. He switched actually. Never mind. Interesting. Never seen that before. So it's one. All right, so we want to shoot him seven times here, and then donate them. That's two shots. Okay, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Uh, four, five, six. I'm gonna grab some ammo here. Luckily, it's ammo in this fight, so it's not that bad, big of a deal if we miss shots. I'm gonna put my grenade and throw it him. So what that does is it's it, it's a phase skip. We're basically gonna uh, hit a damage threshold so that he's because he's gonna revive Meryl here, but she's gonna immediately drop down again. Right, there you go. You are powerful indeed, but I know your weak point. Meryl, stand right where he can see you and throw your brains out. Have a quick donation? Uh, uh sure. Stop! Uh, Meryl. Ian has uh, donated nineteen dollars. He said this is such a nice block. Thanks for a million. And our total is now a thousand sixty-nine. Oh, yo, nice. So I'm gonna throw another grenade here to get him out of that phase, and now we're gonna shoot him. Can't see him, but we know he's there. Two more shots should end the fight. One more. Nice. We got him. Does Mantis a little tricky uh, because he can be a little uh, a little random where he's at, but overall, as long as you keep your shots fine, your grenade tosses are good, then uh, he's not that big of a deal. And right, now I have to switch to player one, actually. I cannot continue the game of player two. <laughs> Pretty funny. So, now we're in the caves. There's gonna be some wolves here, which can be really annoying. Um, we're just gonna punch one of them if we have to. Sorry. Any wolf lovers here? We just really don't want them to bite us. Cause that loses time. Alright, this wolf's gonna see us, so we're gonna punch him. And now we're on to the... Uh, Next area. <laughs> All right. Snake, what's wrong? I thought you were good with dogs. All right, so this part is pretty uh, infamous for just Metal Gear in, in general. Um, Meryl's gonna talk about how there's a there's mines on the floor, and she has to like, she like knows where the mines are, so she has to walk in a specific pattern. And as a casual, you're supposed to, you're supposed to follow her footsteps here, so you know where the mines are, so you don't get blown up. Like she's just like, yeah, I'm smart, I know where the mines are and stuff like that. Like, look at this, like, she, look, like everyone the first time was like, oh my god, I have to follow this these footsteps. It's pretty wild. Now, look at that pattern. Going in, like she's gonna gloat about how she's how like how cool that was. Why does this pattern on the ground or like what she's doing reminds me of the Mario Party game where you gotta like jackhammer the? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. I was able to see where the mines were placed. Are you impressed? Well, a little bit. Only a little. Okay, but honestly, we're just gonna walk forward because there's no mines there. So yeah, that's it. 
Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. Everyone everyone's always like, wait, what? <laughs> so the whole entire part was just kind of kind of worthless. Meryl. Meryl. Uh, he always says it by the way. You can't skip you can't skip him saying Meryl for some reason. Alright, so now this basically Meryl got sniped, and the only way way to fight the sniper is we have to backtrack to the beginning of the game and pick up a sniper rifle from the armory. So we have to go all the way back. Oops, I am messing up here. Let me scroll. Thank you. And this is a big big uh, problem with the game. There's, just, there's a lot of backtracking. Uh, it's solved in the remake. Uh, Twin Snakes. Uh, Wolf got me. That sucks. But yeah, just a lot of backtracking in this game. We need to get this sniper rifle because there's no other way to fight this uh, to fight to wolf. Actually, we need the sniper rifle. And yeah, this is the section we're just going back. So the the snowfield we were just at is actually mined in a lot a lot of areas. So we have to take a specific um, line to make sure we don't get blown up. <clears throat> Fast elevator. I uh, remember I said I we would be seeing this building again. We're gonna see this building a lot because we have to go back and forward to make sure we get all of, of our um <clears throat> our stuff. Like our PSG one, which is the sniper rifle, we need that. And yeah. So yeah, like I said, this minefield coming up is mined. We luckily know exactly where the mines are, so we can take a specific route. It's still kind of tricky though, because the mines are um, in a really, really like specific spots. And if you get even close to them, if you're like two parts to the left or two parts to the right, you can get blown up. So we're gonna kind of do like a little shimmy here. Then we're good. Yeah, we got it. It's actually really, really scary because the mines could be this key could be like right there. So we need to go blown up, thank god. And coming up, in my opinion, is probably the hardest room in the game, honestly. The armory again. So everything I do in this armory is really specific, and you have to do it in a really, really fast uh, way to make sure you don't uh, get caught in here because you could lose time. Toss this guard, run over here, get spotted here, toss this guard. Into the room, throw the chaff, throw the sun grenade, grab both of grab all these ammo. Walk out, walk over here. Okay, we should be good. Alright, so yeah, that room is really scary. Everything that everything that was in that room was designed like every single movement I did was to make sure that we did not get spotted because that guard at the elevator can be a little tricky the, the specific timing on this grenade toss is really important so we got out luckily moon boy has a a, a little thing for you he what said drunk taco bell <laughs> okay <laughs> he's on a mission <laughs> me and josh were having a discussion about um What's better, Wendy's or Taco Bell? And uh, he said that Taco Bell is better when you're drunk. And I'm like, really? What do I mean? I mean, I, never, I don't eat Taco Bell or Wendy's, so it was just a funny conversation. It's a very rude boy. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, so we're back in this room. I'm gonna do the safer strat. You can go left side and throw a chaff, but it's really risky. So what we're, so we're gonna do is just go right side, make sure we. Uh, um, Toss this guard. Don't get spotted by the camera. Just throw a chaff. Right, there we go. Alright. And now we're about to fight a pretty like a pretty hard boss if for the for like if you're beginning to run this game. Because this boss is kind of ruthless. Sniper Wolf 1. She's very, very aggressive on the digital versions of this game. She just loves to just shoot, move around, be really, really, really aggressive. So, and if you're not prepared for it, it's, it's a hard time. 
And the sniping in this game is a little, it's like, it's very outdated and pretty hard because like the, the hitboxes are kind of specific on Wolf in a lot of aspects. You gotta be really careful with this fight because she can just rip us to shreds. There's a wolf here. We should be able to walk past this wolf. Unless I'm stupid. Nope, we're good. That wolf, th those wolves have eagle vision actually. They can see us from a mile away. All right, so I'm gonna grab this ration just in case. We're a little low on rations. It's fine. Okay, now here's a fight. This is Sniper Wolf. This fight is really tricky sometimes. I'm gonna cut my ration here just in case. She's being really, 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 really aggressive, as I said. Okay, we want her to lay down like that. Okay, she's hiding by the pillar stems. We can't do anything. We have to wait for her to come out. So we're gonna grab the bullets here. And that's Sniper Wolf. Can be tricky. We had a couple ration because uh, she was breathing really, really angry. Uh, put the chaps. Got the ammo over here just in case for later on. And yeah, we're about to get into torture, which is basically an auto score. We can't really do much to get past it, so it'll be a good time for any donations, anything to say. But. No donations at the moment. Uh, Snorlax just said you got so much better in this segment. Oh yeah, I, I do. I, I I had a a lot of trouble in that section. That fight, she requires a lot of um practice because she just she's very unpredictable and very aggressive. You don't want her. You don't want to stay under too long. So unfortunately, to all Meryl fans, we're gonna submit to torture, and that means basically Meryl's dead. And the reason why we do that because it's just faster. Sorry, guys. Had enough. So, you're human after all. The torture will stop as I promised. But I'll take the wound in return. Thank you, Josh, for the $15. I'll have my fun Yo. Let's go, Josh. Oh. I hope you can still look at yourself in the mirror, my friend. Ooh, and an anonymous cheer for the 400 bits. Thank you. Yo. Let's go. So yeah, basically we're in the cell. We got captured and we're going to be here for a pretty long time. We can't really do anything to speed it up. Um, there's going to be a really long codec uh, section coming up. And it's like literally like 50 seconds of mashing X <laughs> or any button. And yeah, in this game, if you have to mash really hard to get past these codecs, they're they're not they're not messing around. They really want you to mash that mash those buttons to skip. It's gonna be for a while. Um, a few things to note is that if you're playing any percent, you would be here in the first five minutes of the game. You skip like half the game. Straight up. And then another thing, uh, I actually forgot to mention, um, whenever I'm tossing a guard, I am actually unequipping my weapon and then re-equipping it because doing by doing that, it allows me to uh, skip the animation of snake tossing someone. It's called quick throw. So if you ever see me like throw someone, you always see me uh, unequip my weapon and then equip it again. All right, yeah, so this part takes a really long time. They really just... A lot of stories here. Pretty emotional scene, actually. But we don't have time for that. No time for emotions. Yeah, no time for emotions. We just want we want to play this game fast. Yeah, Thanks for the anonymous for the 21 bits and the 10 bits. Oh, yo. Nice. Shad's oh anonymous. Gosh, it seems so long. Yeah, that, that takes a long time. It's like 50 seconds of smashing X. And there's another really long one coming, uh, like, later on in the game. So, yes. Johnny has diarrhea. He has to go to the bathroom. That's how we escape, by the way. I'm not even kidding. 
what a coincidence. Yeah. Timing. Yeah, he has because he has a, he has like a he's a, he's like sick. Yeah. So basically, Otacon's on a common He's invisible, by the way. I'll, I'll show you guys. He's gonna come through this door. He's gonna be invisible. He's gonna come over here. Give us a ration and give us ketchup. And we're gonna we're gonna use a ketchup to pretend that we're dead, so that Johnny comes to the room comes into the room and un, un, uh, unlocks the door for us. That's the fastest way to get rid of this uh, hey, scene. I'm here. Where? All right, there we go. Oh, jeez, he's coming back. See you later. Wait. All right, so use ketchup. So we're so we lay on the ground too, because we gotta pretend that we're dead. I'm gonna put the key card. He's like, he's like, what the hell? What the hell? All right. All right, and now we're out. I think the best actor I've ever seen in my life. All right, and remember, remember what I said? We're, we gotta see the nuke building again. That area where I couldn't use weapons. Yep, we're about to pass by there again. So yeah, if you were playing any percent, you would actually go down to B2, grab the sniper rifle, but we're playing all bosses. This is um, the longer category. Uh, any percent is about 30 minutes shorter, um, and you skip literally this whole entire section I just did. You just don't even play that part. And you don't fight the other bosses as well. Um, how do you skip the part? I've never played Metal Gear Solid. Uh, is, it just, is there a glitch, or is it you just, just go? Okay, so... Um, Earlier when I did the vent glitch and I, I phased through the wall, you do that in that room as I was in the um, the, the little hallway I was in. And if you skip that part, then um, you can go to the cell immediately and skip half the game. It's just a it's a glitch. Amazing. Yeah. And some people really um, some people like the category more. I personally like this category more, but um, they're both really fun. I think it's a for as a it's a significantly shorter and useless less weapons. Alright. So that's the last we'll ever see of this building. Thank goodness, because this room is terrifying. If you mess up one time, you lose a minute. Because the room's gonna fill up with gas, it's gonna be guards coming, and it just takes forever to get out of there. Because you have to die. You can't you can't not die there. All right, so we're basically going back to the exact area we were at where we fought Sniper Wolf, and we're going to move on to the next part of the game. I said seeing the same exact rooms. Wolf's gonna not see us, thank goodness. We're gonna punch it, sadly. Sorry, guys. That's so mean. I, 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 do to him like that. They're gonna, they're, they're, they're trying to kill me. I'm trying I, to live, man. <laughs> All right. So now we have another pretty decently long um, codec call. Like anytime you see this woman named Naomi Hunter on the codec screen. You know it's gonna be a long codec. Like you'll see her right now. This is this is uh, Colonel Campbell. All right, that's uh, McDonald Miller. Uh, that's Mei Ling. Ah, uh, there you go. There she is. If you see her, you know she talked for about a year. So it's uh it takes a while. All right, so there we go. We're gonna, we're gonna switch grenades here because um, this next part coming up is kind of tricky. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna throw this grenade into this um, this door to skip a cutscene of people coming up. Um, if you don't do this, there's a cutscene where 
uh, people come up behind you because we're going to get alerted. But if you cause an alert early, then we don't have to watch the cutscenes. So I'm going to go over here. I have my sun grenade. And now we're, it's, this part is called uh, ascension or climb. We have to climb exactly like 26 floors of stairs. And this guard's coming behind us. This guard's in front of us. And they're pretty, they're pretty scary, actually. This guard right here. I want to quick throw him. All right. We're, we're, gonna th we're about to throw a sun here, just to make sure that we don't get uh, bombarded by guards. There's a lot of guards in front of us. Guards are behind us, too. Josh says that when you get to it, $50 donation for successful double hit. Ooh, okay. That's, that's really, really, it's a lot later into the game. That's the final boss, actually. Oh, we got shot there. It's a little unlucky. Guard behind us. We're going to th throw this guard. We're going to cause domino effect here. Hopefully. Yep, domino effect. There you go. So this there's a guard behind us about to run really really fast. So we gotta throw a sun here to make sure that we don't get caught by him. Like look at him, he's extremely fast, like ten times faster than us. And we throw a sun so he, he's out of there. Guard in front of us too. Usually there's a guard that spawns uh where I was at, but um it's random sometimes where he doesn't spawn. And that is climb the ascension. Kind of a tricky section, but the hang of it, it's not that bad. So next part is we're about to get shot by liquid on this helicopter, the hind D, and we need to repel down this building. And like a, and a pretty cool sequence actually. I'm gonna shoot the satellite here. So this sec this sequence is kind of weird because the the times where liquid shoots you is completely random, and if he shoots you, you lose a lot of time on the climbing down. Can be a little tricky. Okay, let's talk to us. We don't want to. We don't care what he's talking about. We need a shot, that's really good. Oh, we got hit by the smoke. We don't get hit by the smoke, it's a little slower. <clears throat> but, pretty good overall. And this part's kinda tricky. These guards are gonna be over here, they're gonna try to shoot us and knock us back. Josh Hushel says, tell Alex I need the voices for the scenes he can't skip. The scenes he can't skip? Alright, that was actually really, really good. Usually you get shot there, but we are good. Uh, well, wait, what do you say? The scenes can't skip. Uh, it just says, uh, yeah, voices for scenes he can't skip. <clears throat> uh, I'm trying to think right now. There's not that many. There's not that many scenes where you can't skip. Well, I'm I'm down. I'm down. And so this part is just a lot of climbing stairs. So if you have anything in the read flow or anything to say, then that's a good time. Um. Yeah. Not not much. <laughs> all right. Yeah. We're just climbing stairs. So <laughs> be prepared to see all this. Uh, all these stairs being climbed. Dude, must be so fit <laughs> if I he's know. running up off of stairs. Yeah, he climbed, he just climbed 26 stairs as people were shooting him. And now he's, with, now he's climbing 26 stairs again. It's been insane. Right. So, we're, so once we climb these stairs, we're going to fight our, what is it, sixth boss of the game? Um, Hind D. And basically it's a helicopter. We got to shoot with a missile a lot. Uh, this is the best, that's the best way I can say it. It just we just shoot him with a missile, and the hind is really, really durable. 
Like, it doesn't care if, uh... Oops, I about to add those trap there. Yeah, it doesn't care about, like... How many shots taken, like, it's still just gonna shoot you over and over again. Because this helicopter has, uh, a turret on it. And it's ruthless. So, yeah, I'm gonna get shot here. Ooh, yep. Yeah, I'm gonna take a shot here. It's fine. We're gonna throw chaps at specific intervals to make sure we don't get shot by the, uh, turrets. And it's kind of difficult. Alright, we're good there. If I move correctly, then I should not get shot on this fourth turret. It's a little tricky, though. It's a little tricky, it's a little tight. Also RNG sometimes too, but it's okay. Alright, here we go. We're about to fight the Hind D. And in order to fight this do this fight fast, you have to make sure you shoot him when he's flying towards you, and it's a little tricky. So hopefully we nail these shots. Also we need rations because we are gonna get shot a lot. I'm not hitting him, it's okay. Thankfully, we have a lock on, so we're able to shoot him pretty well. So we're gonna have to come over here. Yep. We need six shots on him before this phase is over. Let's so go come again. Shoot him again. One more time. That should be it. Oh, I messed up. Never mind. Okay, that should be it. Yeah. So we'll go over here, grab these um <clears throat> these singer missiles, because we're gonna need them for the second phase. The second phase, we want to keep him in an infinite loop where he just keeps shooting us over and over again. But we don't want to take too much time or else he goes into a really, really bad loop where he goes under the building. It's it's a bad time. So now we're waiting for him to come back over here. Right, that's good. So yeah, we want him to keep. We want him to do this for the whole entire time. Like I said, if you take too much time on that part, then he just likes to go in the building, and it takes a really long time. And that's a really good hind fight, where you mess up a little bit, but manage to recover. The fact it can, can be a little tr uh, troublesome, but it's nothing compared to the next fight of the game, which is Wolf 2. We're going to fight Wolf again. And that fight is extremely RNG. Like, when I say random, that's a definition of random. You just don't want to deal with this fight too much. Like, you don't want to be there for longer than a minute. Like, it could be a 40 second fight, it could be a one minute fight, it could be like a two minute fight. It's up to Wolf how she wants to decide, how, how she wants to act. So, you remember those stairs we just climbed? Guess what? We're going back down. More stairs. Except we're going down this time, so it's not as bad, but still stairs. I'm also gonna grab some uh backup ammo just in case because Wolf does not like to uh she does not like getting shot by singer missiles, so we want those. So yeah, we're gonna throw like a lot of chaps here. Cause we have so many. Yeah, that's a lot of stairs. We have to go down the elevator that Otacon uh, fixed. And there's going to be four invisible guards there. We call that uh, either the four, the four horsemen or ultra box. Personally, I like ultra box more than four horsemen. Um, but yeah, that's the name of the fight. Either either or. And it's, 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 it's a really specific strat. You have to make sure you choke them in a specific order. 
If you mess up, then you lose a little bit of time, but it's not that bad. All right. And here we go. We're about to do this. I'm going to grab this ration because it's free. Yeah, auto content of the calls be like, there's four invisible guards in, on your elevator. You gotta make sure you, you know, like watch out, snake. And you wish you have a really funny face. Watch coming up, funny face. All right, there you go. Too late, snake. Now die. That sucks. Oh, that sucks. And that's all right, so we got all the guards. Can be a little tricky, but um, we managed to do it. So coming up right now, Sniper Wolf 2. This fight is notorious for every single person who runs this game. They hate the words wolf and two a lot. So we're gonna grab this ammo really fast. It's fine to get shot there, I don't mind. <clears throat> so this fight is very, very uh, difficult. Because she has so much more room to move around, and we gotta make sure we are menuing between our stinger and our sniper rifle over and over again. It's a hard time. So hopefully, she is willing to cooperate this time. Here we go. So wolf, wolf like jams his claw somehow, and like like hacks it, hacks into it. We don't know where she's at first. We just think to make sure where she's at. She's left side. That's really good, actually. That's really good. We want to equip to. We want to switch over to the singer so we know where she's at. This is a really good wolf, actually. Oh, really? Really good, huh? Let's get fight. Oh my god. As I say that, oh god, it is. So that was a really good wolf too, actually. Usually sometimes she can mess around, go behind this tree and stuff, but that was a really, really, really good fight. Alright, that's uh, the first disc of the game. I'm done. I want to make sure we have our stun grenade equipped because we need that next. And that's this too. So I mean, that's this one. So we gotta switch to, we gotta switch to this too, actually. So you go over here into the PS TV. Switch to this. There we go. So the strat for this next room is we have to throw the stun grenade at a specific point, and then we have to throw a a frag grenade um, at this little like. Crane to make sure we can get past this uh, this crane without falling into the lava. So right here, I'm equipping the grenade right here. Right here. Should we get? So that, that that part's a little tricky. Like you have to make sure you throw your your, your stun and your um your grenade at specific points. Down. And this next uh, fight is a little tricky as well. It's called Cargo Elevator. These guards actually have, have a lot of health, so we want to make sure we kick them off of the elevator or choke them. So here we go. This is it. Cargo Elevator. Oops. We got one little flub there. The, the backup is if you don't get them off the elevator, you just choke them. 
fall faster. Like, you don't want to shoot them, you don't want to do anything. You can use a stinger if you want. It's a little tricky, but those guards have a lot of health. That you do not want to deal with. Alright, and then here we have another fight coming up, another boss. Vulcan Raven, which is, in my opinion, probably the funniest boss in the game, speedrun-wise. Because the speedrun strat for this guy is pretty funny, if I had to be honest. You guys are about to see it. After this codec of mashing. Let's see, we're just waiting for this codec to come. It's not that long a codec, thank goodness, but it is still a codec. Which you can skip on PC, by the way, if you're on PC. PC is a completely different beast when it comes to this game. It's just a different game. But it's really it's really weird though. The audio in that on PC is really, really nasty. Alright. Some more mashing. Here we go. This is Vulcan Raven, okay, so you <laughs> If you guys have never seen this trap for this fight, you guys are about to see something really interesting. And yes, this is the fastest way to beat this fight. Technically. On easy. Alright, don't blink. Let's see something kind of wild here. Yep. Wait, what? <laughs> yep. Because <laughs> we have so much life that we're able to just do this. Let's fight. Alright, yeah, so basically the fastest way to beat Raven is if you just run into him with the grenades and just blow yourself up because you have so much life on easy that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's just because you have so much life, there's just no reason not to do it. And you have so many rations at this point, but like, just faster. Was there another way to do it before that strat was? Oh, uh, yeah. Like you, yeah, you could use the Nikita as well. That's what you, that's what you want to use if you're not, if you're playing hard difficulties, but, um, um, on easy, that's the fastest way. And, um, some people use, some people use, um, the Nikita still, because it's just more convenient to them, but it's a little slower. So overall, a really funny strat. All right, so we're coming up to the end game here, which is uh, quite possibly the the slowest part of the game. Basically, we have to get this Palky. It's about to get shot over hands to deactivate Rex or quote unquote deactivate Rex. And you remember those alerts we got in the beginning of the game? Well, this is the uh, the part of the game I was talking about. So what's gonna happen this in a in a cutscene coming up is Snake's gonna get his get, get to get the card shot out of his hand. He's gonna land in the sewers here, and if you have less than ten alerts, then the, a rat will literally eat the key, and we have to find the rat, kill it, and get the key. But even more, if you have more than ten alerts, then it drops into a ditch in one of seven areas. So we're able to control the RNG just by doing that. So it's a lot better than dealing with any sort of rat RNG. And yeah, so there's more codex. Otacon calls us three times in a row. He's lonely. No, I'm just kidding. He just really wants to talk to us. Talk to us. All right. So we're gonna do an, a technique here called skating, which is basically me unequipping and reequipping my weapon. And what that allows you to do is make sure the snake's um, foot doesn't hit the ground, so the guard cannot hear me hit the ground. So the guard can usually hear me because the um, the uh, the panel is like really loud, and he can hear my footsteps. But by doing that, he he cannot hear us at all. All right, snake. 
Alright, so now we that, now we get to see what the, where the RNG is, because this is the part of the game that a lot of people um, really do not like, because it's just like completely random. It decides it decides a lot of times. You can lose 30 seconds on this part if you get the worst spot, and we don't want the worst spot. So we'll see what we got here. So yeah, here we go. So we, we have to take a specific route to make sure we hit all the points where the key could possibly land in. And if we get a good spot, then that's really good. If we get a bad spot, that's really bad. So here we go. No. No. Okay, we got a bomb. Oh, there we go, that's it. So that spot's not that good, but it's not the worst spot, so it's not that big of a loss. We also got bomb too, which is kind of unlucky at the same time. Overall, not that bad of a pal key. There's only really two spots you really you really don't want the key to be in. It's the one the wreck right next to me. There's gonna be like a really like long corridor you have to like walk in in the sewers. And there is a spot where like it's all the way to the left. If you don't get any of the spots, then it doesn't really matter that much. You lose like a few seconds from the god spot, which is right under the bridge. So yeah, endgame is basically just walking back and forward and putting this key into this into these computers. So we're more skating to make sure this guard doesn't hear us. I mean, we don't we don't care if he sees us because the cutscene is gonna end, is gonna stop us, stop him from doing anything. Oh, that's scary. We don't want to get locked in that room because if you get locked in that room, you actually have to die. There's no other way to get out of that room. So yeah, this would be this would be a good uh, point for donation. So we're just gonna basically go back and forward for about like ten minutes. Anything you want to say, Bob? We don't have any new donations at the moment. But I just want to say that for the people who, if you don't know about Make a Wish, it is a nonprofit organization that grants wishes for kids battling critical illnesses. We've seen how the COVID pandemic has affected uh, many aspects of our world, but another strongly impacted thing was wishes. And locally, over 150 have been postponed, and we're raising money this weekend to help 2021 be a fantastic year of gift giving. So if you have some, you know, extra change here or there. Um, can do the exclamation donate and find a link to donate. Yep. So yeah, basically, yeah, this part is just me going back and forth between um, what's it called these specific spots. Because basically, this key, uh, the key, the shape of it depends on what the temperature is. So for this part, this key has to be cold. And in order to make sure this key is cold, we have to stay in this room, and it's been tested. You have to be here for one minute and one second to make sure that this key is cold. It can vary sometimes, but usually one minute and one second is like the time you would want to wait in this room for it. So yeah, we're just waiting here for this key to get cold. We can't speed it up, we can't slow it down. I mean, we can't slow it down, but we just can't speed it up. So we'll be here for 61 seconds. Yeah, this is the end game. It's mainly just this is a lot of going back and forward. Um, yeah, just a lot of this. Make sure you have your items ready for the final bosses and stuff. Look, we have a timer. I use a timer to make sure that my time, my uh, my key is frozen. So I'm gonna check it just in case. It's cold. So now we're getting out of here. Now we have to go all the way back to the computer that we were just at to input the key again. So you can see this area a lot. 
Underground Blaze slash um, Rex's Lair. I like calling it Rex's Lair because it sounds pretty cool. It's like, dude, it's his lair. Said again, we're gonna make sure we skate over here so that we don't get caught by this guard. Getting caught by this guard is kind of annoying because he shoots you, he can knock you down. It's not a fun time. And we need to be careful here because we don't want we want to get this computer as fast as possible, but also not to get caught by the camera. Right, so we're out of the room and we're going to our final pal key, which is all the way back to Blast Furnace. So we have to go back back to all those elevators and deal with like all the codex stuff like that because it's a long time. I'm just doing nothing. On Twin Snakes, uh, the remake on GameCube, you actually don't have to do this whole entire section I'm doing. Because the key, there's there's like pipes inside that room that like you freeze or make the key hot immediately. So Twin Snakes is actually a really cool run because of that. It removes all the aspects of backtracking or anything of that sort. Uh, no PSG one pack up, there's a there's a different way to do that. So just get it just kinda of modernizes the game a little bit. Because games back then, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of backtracking. They didn't have that much room to put. They wanted to ex extend the game. So we're going to get a codec here. This codec is not that long, but the codec going back down is really long. It's like the second longest codec in the game. Because Naomi wants to talk to us for about a year. Again. So the little trick you can do is you can go first person, and the moment you're out of first person because of the codec, then you just press select. And if you press select in this game before a codec, uh, like when it's like flashing red, you can just answer it immediately instead of waiting. Like so. Alright, yeah, so McDonald Miller's gonna tell, talk to us for about, um, not that long, see? Naomi was on the screen, so she didn't talk for about a year. Server's waiting. This turret right here, by the way, is completely random. It can, sometimes it can shoot you, sometimes it can't shoot you. Sometimes it doesn't shoot you. It's completely random. So we all just touch our luck. And here we go. Let's see if the, the turret hits us. It hit us. And that sucks. That donation? Oh, yeah. Time. Sure. Uh, thank you, Gummy, for the $20 donation. Say, let's go Metal Gear so Metal Gear Speed running for charity. Yep, let's go. And uh, yeah, just uh, a lot of just waiting. We have to be in this next blast furnace room for sixty-one seconds again. I don't know why someone someone at Konami was like, you know, honestly, I mean, we gotta program this at sixty-one seconds, not sixty seconds, one minute, sixty-one. Who knows? All right, so we're waiting here for six one seconds. Uh, some shout outs I want to give here. I want to give a shout out to um, Metal Gear Speedrunners. It's a community of just people who receive speedrun these games. Uh, I started speedrunning like not that long ago and it's such an open community, so it's so nice. Everyone's willing to help, so many resources. People just love this game. 
really really helpful like they, if it wasn't for them that I would not I would not be I would not be running this game still just won't help out so much they're also having a tournament mount right now for this category on PC that happens every single um, Saturday and every single Monday it's like a league it's pretty cool that's pretty amazing yeah it's pretty sick and um, shout out to just everyone who's been able to just, you know do all the donations everyone's free to watch this is a really cool game. This is for a really good cause. Okay, so we're coming up right now. And it is red, so we are out of here. Fun fact, actually. Um, some people use audio cues for that part. I use audio cues, actually. When that when the music hits a specific point, that's when I know the key is finished. It's pretty funny. But I like to just check it, just because why not? Like It's it's scary, because if you, if you go all the way back to the to the the room and you don't see and, you, and the key is not uh heated or frozen you have to go all the way back wait 61 seconds in that room again and then you just you're not doing that you're speedrunning the game you're definitely just quitting all right so we're about to get on our second elevator And this elevator has the longest code, I mean, the second longest codec in the game. I, it might be, I don't know if it's longer than the final codec of the game. I'm assuming it's not, but it is, it's up there. <clears throat> so yeah, of course it's Naomi, she's gonna talk to us. She, she doesn't hate us anymore. So yeah, first person to make sure that we, we get the, um, out of, out of uh, the codex as possible. <laughs> Alright, here we go. It's coming fuck right now. Alright, here we go. Naomi, for about a year. Alright. <sighs> yep. A lot of matching X. So a lot of people, that's why some people like uh, playing PC more. You don't have to match X ever, actually. You press Escape or F3 or Start on your controller, and guess what? You don't have to <laughs> you just skip it every cut the cutscene. Oh, that's so nice. I know, but th there's just so many different things you have to do on, on PC. You actually can enter a, a, a God mode, and you can like be invincible. So it's just it's just two different categories. One's more convenient, I would say. PC is more convenient. But cons are really cool. There's like a lot of different strats you gotta do for these fights. So the next fight that's coming up right now is Metal Gear Rex, which is, you know, it should be the hardest fight in the game, but it's Metal Gear Rex. This is the this is the title of the game. This is like the uh, the thing we're scared of. No, it's like actually the easiest fight in the game. Besides Raven, I mean, no, it's actually harder than Raven. I mean, easier than Raven. And we saw we saw how easy Raven was. We just kind of blew ourselves up with grenades. This fight is like extremely easy if you're playing on easy. Because, for some reason on easy, the chaff grenades disable Rex for like a few seconds. So we're gonna abuse that, because we have a chaff grenade extra, so why not? You're gonna see me abuse the um, this mechanic. He's gonna just stand there and just shoot him with missiles. Doesn't really take that long. But first we gotta input this key. Seeing you go up and down the stairs and doing this whole ladder thing just reminds me of Kale and just going back and forth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Early games, you know? Puzzles. Mm -hmm. Backtracking. They like that stuff a lot. Alright. And that's it. So, plot twist! McDonald Miller is actually not McDonald Miller. Whoa. It's actually... He's about to see it. He's like, who are you? 
it the person the whole time it was a main villain it was liquid steak the whole time oh no so now to get out of here, we have to call we have to call Otacon. um <clears throat> then tell us how to get out of here he's gonna, he's gonna hack the door or whatever to, to close it Someone says, don't let Vermillion forget to voice the liquid speech. The liquid speech? <laughs> All right, I got it, I got it. Okay, I'm gonna show you what's the funniest line in this game. It's coming up right here. I'm not just gonna show it. Snake. Did you like my sunglasses? There you go, I love a line. <laughs> oh my gosh. Did you like my sunglasses? <laughs> so we're gonna stand over here, wait for Rex to get up. Our singer and start unloading. And you can't move. Let's fight. So that's phase one. Phase one is really easy. I should always do this, but I, I gotta stop. <laughs> I always mash square there, and it's really funny. Crimson says, can you tell Alex he forgot my picture? My picture? I feel like I'm just your messenger. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Okay, so this fight, we just gotta go up over here, and just unshot and loading. We should not be any danger of dying. Because we didn't get knock hit in the first phase. One more shot, that should be it. Alright, and that's Metal Gear Rex. That fight is really easy. But coming up is arguably the hardest fight in the game, which is Liquid Snake. And he requires he's like a fighting game. It's like a fighting game, okay? You have to do infinite on him, but it requires a specific rhythm. And you gotta be like really, really uh careful with this. So I gotta actually I have to take my audio off because it's really hard with headphones because he actually throws up your rhythm really hard with his uh, sound effects. All right. Also, I'll do the speech just for just for uh, whoever was here. I mean, who 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 requested it? Josh, I think. All right. I'll be back. I'm gonna take my headphones off. So this fight is kind of hard. You gotta keep in this really specific pattern. If you win, if you, win you, might you might be still playing the saber. <laughs> you could enjoy one brief moment of love. Before the, end. before the end. If you cross, if you cross this line, line you'll, you'll fall. fall. At this, At this height, height, it'll it kill, kill even you. you. <laughs> Have at you, Snake. Have at you, Snake. Right, Oh, mess it up a little bit. It's fine. Okay. That's fine. That's it. Alright. So, I lost like a few seconds there, but it's fine. That fight's kind of hard, though. You gotta make sure you uh, keep a specific rhythm. You can't you can't get off the rhythm. It's like a rhythm game. Overall, pretty uh, good liquid. And this is the final escape of the game. <clears throat> Now we gotta make sure we kill these guards fast. And so Liquid's not dead, dead. Spoiler alert. We gotta actually shoot him. And it takes 15 shots to kill him at this part of the game. So we're aiming at a specific spot so we can blow up these barrels coming up, these guards. Shot. That's actually really ready to get shot in this checkpoint. 
Usually doesn't happen too much. So this next checkpoint is the hardest checkpoint. It's completely random if you get shot here, but usually you get shot one time and then it's... It's fine. So get shot once there. Shot twice, that's really unlucky. The checkpoint's down. You did it, Snake! Alright, so now Liquid's gonna come here and we gotta shoot him at specific spots. You don't want him to, you don't want to aim at him too fast or he's just gonna swerve the whole time. It's kind of a disaster. It's not over yet. Liquid. So it's one shot. Two shots. Three shots. Good. That's good. The hitbox is a little weird on this part. I should be in this phase. It's one shot. Two shots. He's gonna switch over here. Got him. Nice. Really good. Really good escape so far. Really good. One more shot should be it. That's it. That is Metal Gear Solid 1. Well, usually we wait until the end of the game for the cutscenes and stuff, but we're done here. That is, that is the game. So thanks for watching, everyone. I uh, appreciate the donations. And yeah. Thank you so much for playing. No problem. For, you know, for joining us and showing this off. Yeah, no problem. This game is really, really cool. Uh, shout out to the community, as I said, Metal Gear Speedrunners, twitch.tv slash Metal Gear Speedrunners. Amazing community, amazing Discord, just really cool people. And uh, yeah, shout out to the Make a Wish Bay Area just for causing this uh, to happen Monica. and stuff like that. Um, let okay? people know uh, where to find you and uh, a little bit more about your yes, Twitch. So. Oh, yeah, so I stream uh, at twitch.tv slash Vermillion Noel. Uh, I stream every single day. I stream a lot of variety of games, but I speedrun in Metal Gear a lot. I, I uh, play a lot of different I games. Know, I play Smash too. But I hope he's dead. So yeah, just a good variety if you want to follow me there. Also follow me on Twitter at ST underscore Vermillion. Um, yeah, just thank you. That's about it. Just cool game. All right. Thank you very much. All right, no problem.